This is the Global Economic Commodity Scrap Metal and Recycling Report by our Benley Roloff Trailer and Open Top Trailer, September 8th, 2020. U.S. weekly steel production fell to 1.383 million gross ton, still near the multi-month high as the economy slowly continues to reopen. Crude oil price fell to 39.77 a barrel, a multi-month low on good but slower U.S. job gains, falling demand, and oversupply concerns. Venezuela, the number one country in proven oil reserves, just shut their last oil rig, yet global prices remain low. The U.S. oil rig count rose to 181, near a decade low due to the low prices, low demand, and oversupply. Current prices hurt U.S. profitability. U.S. weekly oil production fell to 9.7 million barrels per day, a multi-year low on low prices and Hurricane Laura. Scrap steel number one heavy melt export buying price Philly was steady at $220 gross ton as upward pressure remains on price due to increased demand. Scrap steel number one heavy melt price rose to about $246 gross ton to a multi-month high on increased U.S. and global demand. There is upward price pressure for October. Hot roll coil steel rose to 2640 per hundred weight, a multi-month high on increased demand and increased iron ore and scrap metal prices. Copper rose to 307 and a half cents, a multi-year high on slow global growth. This is a very positive global economic indicator. Aluminum price rose to 79.7 cents a pound, a multi-month high leading out spikes on slow global growth. Cardboard scrap price, OCC Southeast, was steady at $70 a ton on moderate demand and a good supply. The U.S. trade deficit in July jumped to a hugely negative $63.6 billion, the worst in 12 years. This is despite years of trade deals and programs as imports surged 10.9% on U.S. imports of cars, car parts, and airplanes, which skyrocketed. U.S. new jobs for August fell to 1.371 million new jobs, which is normally great, but that leaves a huge 11.5 million below February. Worse is that 344,000 of the gain is temporary government census workers. Total U.S. jobs, which is truly people working ending August, shows the recent gains were great, but the current job level is back to where it was in March 2015, five and a half years ago. So that means all the jobs created in the last five and a half years are still gone. The U.S. unemployment rate percent fell to 8.4 percent, which is great, but the government also says that if they included COVID temporary layoffs, which they do not, the real number would be 9.1 percent. And if they included the 3.7 million people that simply stopped looking for a job, then the real number could be considered as 11.4 percent. U.S. vehicle sales rose to 15.19 million annualized, which is good, but many were imports. But the good news is sales and production is forecasted to increase. The U.S. IHS economic index rose to 54.6, the highest growth since March 2019, as new orders rose for the first time since February and unemployment increased the most since February. Wall Street's Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 521 points to 28,133 with concerns over economic growth and a possible K-shaped recovery where the rich have a V-shape, which is a very fast recovery, and the middle class goes up a bit and then down. As always, feel free to call or email me with any questions, and we hope all have a safe and profitable week.